So we played the Game of Geeks a couple of weeks back when Greg Farrow was visiting from the Packet Pushers Network, Devendra Hardawar from Engadget, and Alex Wilhelm. No one ever really knows where Alex came from, but <laughs> we had some fun. Watch. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again to play the Game of Geeks. Three major geeks on stage today from Mattermark.com. Alex Wilhelm, it's great to see you. Good to be back. Thank Congratulations you. on the jet acquisition. I'm a millionaire now. It's my last show. That t-shirt so is worth you. ten times more than it was last night. Maybe uh, a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> also with us from Engadget.com, it's Devendra Hardawar. Hello, Devendra. Thanks for having me. And from the Packet Pushers podcast. There's a lot of peas in there. There is. It's Greg alliteration Farrow. done large. Ah, it's exactly right. Yep. Now, this is a Q&A version, the 20-question quest version of the Game of Geeks. I'm going to ask you to answer a question. Typical geek trivia. Now, the key is your buzzer. In front of you, there's a buzzer. You must be the first person to buzz in with the correct answer. We've spent much money on this elaborate system that will lock out other people. It actually okay. is smart enough to know who hit first. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Alex Wilhelm. <laughs> I didn't even press What's it. your answer? You put it up and down. My answer is 42, obviously. Absolutely mm. correct. So I can also, if you get it wrong, lock you out, and then it'll be up to the remaining two contestants to come up with the right answer. The first person with the correct answer gets a point, and the first person to get to a lot of points wins. <laughs> and, it's the game and, that never ends. It's a race to the top. <laughs> we have 20 questions. We'll see how long it takes for somebody to win. Uh, this is your prize. You get temporary possession of the hat of incredible pain. <laughs> uh, we don't. We don't even know what that. The memory is. Yeah, Do you have the MSRP on that thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's handmade. Negative five dollars. All you need is a glue gun and a lot of memory. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, question number one. <laughs> Hands over buzzers. What is the name of the evil AI in Tron? Master MCP. Very good. Master the MCP, MCP the Master Control Pro. Oh, I should have asked you for extra points. Yeah. <laughs> what does MCP stand for? Greg Farrow, a point to you. Question two. Which sci-fi author famously encouraged us never to forget our towels? And it's Greg Farrow uh -huh. once again. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg. Wait, I have Sorry. to push a button here. Okay. okay. And it's Alex Wilhelm. Douglas Adams. Absolutely correct. From the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He's from your country. That's so bad. Wow. No, no he's no, from England. No. Brain oh, freeze. He's from England. I'm from Australia. Okay. Once again, the vendor of <laughs> Dead nothing. last. Can't Got believe I'm right. But here's the adventure beat alumni, I'm telling you. Here's mm -hmm. your chance to catch up with question three. Who is the only U.S. president to have received a U.S. patent. Do we lose points if we're wrong? No. Guess. Andrew Jackson. Alex Wilhelm, that is incorrect. Oh, well. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. That is absolutely right, Greg Farrow. <laughs> Abraham wow. Lincoln invented a technique to lift <laughs> boats over shoals and obstructions in a river, applied for a patent, and did, in fact, have a patent, the only U.S. president to do so. Greg Farrow, another 20 points. Very nice. Was that a guess? Yes. <laughs> I'm impressed. The best I actually remembered vaguely that there might have been something like that. I was. Was, I would I have thought it. Jimmy Carter, yeah. maybe one of the more technocratic presidents, Abraham Lincoln. Wasn't confident okay. enough to go forward with the first. No one thought of George W. Bush, shockingly. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a cheap one. He yeah. has no patents in his name. <laughs> Question four, ladies and gentlemen. Position your hands properly. In what Carl Sagan novel were scientists able to unravel enough of the number pi to find hidden, hidden messages from the creators of the human race? All you really have to know in this is Carl Sagan novel, frankly, because there aren't that many. <laughs> if you said Isaac Asimov novel, I had yeah, a shot here. Yeah. Sagan novel. Know. Anybody? Nope. You want to take a guess? Devendra, take a guess. Contact. Contact is absolutely oh, right. There you go. Devendra Hardawar well finally well gets finally. on the board. Well so done. now it looks like it's a tie for last place. <laughs> That's one way to put so it. Did. Between Alex and Devendra, we'll Greg Farrow in the lead, 20 to 10 to 10. And we're ready for question number five. In which year was the very first iPhone released? Devendra Hardwar. 2007. That's right. This That's is true. exciting. That's Alex, true. you're in the last place, but it's easy to catch up right now. One correct answer will do so for question six. In crypto, in cryptography and computer security, what is the form of attack where an attacker secretly relays and possibly alters 
communication between two parties who believe they are directly communicating with man one another, Greg attack. Farrow. Mm. Man in the middle is That's absolutely right. right. Ten points to Greg, who is now in a clear lead. Devinder Hardwar second, Alex Wilhelm third. <laughs> Time for our seventh question. <laughs> what is the only planet in our solar system whose name does not derive from ancient Greek or Roman mythology? The only... Greg Farrow. Earth. Earth is absolutely correct. Mm. Greg Farrow is pulling away, ladies and gentlemen. I actually knew that one. <laughs> yep. That's actually a really surprising, but of course, yep. it makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Unless you call it Terra, in yeah. which case. Yes. I was actually tilt. tossing up whether to say to Earth or Terra, because Terra <laughs> is actually the Greek root. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mattel launched which video game system in 1980? Greg Power Farrow. Glove. Say again? Power Glove. That is incorrect. I'm going to lock you out, and you two can... Yes, Devinder Hardware. Can we come then? That is also incorrect. Ah. You don't I have, have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The answer is in well, television. That's yeah, what I was Something television. Vision. All right. This is a tough one. Gird yourselves. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? <sighs> that's a reference. Greg African or European? Again. Absolutely oh, the right answer. Yeah, no, that's my universal oh my education. Right, right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, get ready, okay? How many bits in a nibble? Greg Farrow. Four bits. Packet pusher. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> we Why don't you ask him his middle yeah. name next? All like, right. <laughs> uh, what was Free your first point. job, Greg? This, no, is, to one. this is turning into a blowout. <laughs> You're going to know this one. Which computer did Commodore release in 1977? <laughs> I only have one answer to this one. It was, I'll just go first. Yeah. Is it the Commodore 64? No! It is not the Commodore 64. Oh, Next! <laughs> you only have a few choices, really. That's true. Go with Commodore 74. Go ahead. ColecoVision? Devinder yeah. Harder, ColecoVision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Greg Farrow. PC 64? No, it was the Commodore Pet. What? Uh, of course. Remember when you called us esteemed tech people and then this is happening? Not now? so much. I think we've yeah. really lost Did it? Did it? Now, I'm going to guess here, but I think Pet stood for Personal Entertainment Technology. Is that correct? I think it did. That's as I recall, yeah. 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 All right, moving along. Because it wasn't a computer, it was personal. Something a little more <laughs> modern, something the kids would know. Sure. Alex, this is for you. <laughs> Thank you. What recent game features evil parodies of Chuck E. Cheese animatronics? Devinder Hardware. Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's is absolutely correct. What's your favorite character for Five I Nights? I don't know. I just watched my uh, younger <laughs> exactly. cousin play that's, it. That's all I know, too. Yeah. Our, our kid, Michael, has every character and everything. He loves that game. Yep. It's, it's really an interesting story because this was an independent game by Scott Calvin. Uh, he never, you know, wasn't well known. Put this game out. No marketing, no fanfare, but somehow the kids clomped onto it. Yeah. And the other day it was a Target and they're selling Five Nights at Freddy's figurines. I mean, it clearly. So it's the inverse of No Man's Sky. Yes. <laughs> a really great game yeah. without the hype. Just a really great game. <laughs> uh, what processor is in the iPhone 7? Alex Wilhelm. The A10. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll give I'm still that. in last place. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Are you ready? Let me reset this. Your hands over the buzzers. In Star Trek II, which you'll remember as the Wrath of Khan, <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the planet oh my God. on which Khan was marooned? Greg Farrow thinks he knows. I know people yeah, who wouldn't know. Um, it starts with our um, regeneration or something. Is it regeneration? You were say reg you're thinking Regulus, but it's SETI Alpha 4. Yeah, you're, no. A 5, sorry. Yeah. 4 was... Earlier. That was the other name. The, 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 the one they never, they never published, yeah. All right, nobody it's answered that wheel. one correctly, so we still are at 60, 30, and 20. Greg, Devendra, and Alex. Mm. Alex, you're going to have to get in gear here. Fortunately, this is your question. Oh, no. I've been jinxed. What popular 1990s <laughs> virtual reality game featured killer dinosaurs? I don't know that one. I was, I was very religious at that point in time. We didn't no have video idea. games. No virtual idea. reality game in, in the 90s. In the 1990s. <laughs> Jurassic Park. I actually played it at, uh, I, I played it at uh, uh, SIGGRAPH in 1992. It required a silicon graphics oh, okay. workstation right. to play. And you had a helmet this size and a tail as big as this to carry all the data. It was called Dactyl Nightmare. Or mm -hmm. Oculus Point Five. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, what was the Thank first you. commercial optical disc storage medium? 
Laser Defender disc? Hardware. Yes, exactly right. Also known as Disco Vision. <laughs> I love that name. What? They should have stuck with that. It yeah. would have been way more successful if it was called it was in 19, Disco Vision. It was in 1978 oh and a predecessor to the CD-ROM, which came out six years ago. I, I lament years later. the loss of Disco Vision. <laughs> and I think they said this correctly, optical disc storage medium. They did not say digital because it wasn't, in fact, digital. Mm -hmm. It was an analog medium. That's why it was so large. Confusing. Yeah, Impressive. yeah, that's oh, right. Size of an LP. Are you ready? We only have four, I'm sorry, three more questions. Oh, good, I lose. So, Alex. <laughs> I'm squalled out of victory. Thank you. You just, uh, well, I'm sorry. You, you could be second place. Why don't you go for second? <laughs> a silver medal is almost as good as gold. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Here it is. Who coined the term, and I'll give you the hey, year. We have to reset, have to reset the, uh, yeah, Christmas tree's going In on. 1986 is the year. Who coined the term cyberspace? William Gibson. Greg Farrow's absolutely yeah. right for extra points. Do you remember the book? Uh, Neuromancer. Neuromancer is correct. That's there actually is some debate over that, but we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. I think that that's widely Should accepted as the yeah, correct yeah, answer. It's, it's long, though. It's long. I know. I, I look at it, I'm like, I could. But, books are long. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind the... You know, <laughs> someday stop, stop. they'll do uh, books with pictures, and it'll be... <laughs> All right, two more questions, ladies and gentlemen. I can be at home right now, but no. I got Leo. Edward Snowden famously leaked documents shedding light on what clandestine surveillance program by the NSA that collected the vendor hardware. Prism. Prism is absolutely correct. You could pull up into the second place. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave this one out. Who was voted president of the internet in Tech Republic's 2009 mock election? That's, Craig That's correct. <laughs> making, wow. making him wow. very happily the winner of the second for the second time. So it's already yeah, signed. Oh, yeah. The crown of knowledge. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time on the Game of Geeks. Everybody give everybody a big kiss now. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> I, I still haven't got him to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, the old the 70s game. giveaway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's like fun. Like fun. We have one more round left, right? And thanks to Anthony Nielsen, who wrote most of those questions. Jerry, did you help with those two? Anthony and Karsten Bonney did most of those questions. Some good questions in there. Weird questions. Yeah. African or... That was a, <laughs> that good, that was a that trick was. question. That was a good one. <laughs>